Sometimes it feels like every day is exactly the same. I wake up, I make my coffee, and I go to work. I wake up, I make my coffee, and I go to work. Again, and again, and again, and again. Feels like I'm stuck, stuck in a loop. Wait a second, a loop? A loop, that's exactly what I need. I need this loop. The loop is exactly what I've been looking for. A loop, that's it. Oh, that's really great. Would you like tater tots or curly fries for that meal? Oh, um, uh, uh, curly fries, please. We'll be ready in 20 minutes. Great, thanks. some nights where I lay awake in bed and I just kind of cycle through all the embarrassing things that have happened to me throughout my life, right? It's a good thing to do at like two in the morning. And after you're done cycling through your humiliation playlist, you think, oh, good. Thank goodness I'm not adding to this anymore. That, that was in the past. Well, I added to it again. Oops. I was recently at a wedding in California. It was beautiful. It was so fun. It was for family. And I was asked to play in the band for like a couple tr songs. My uncle was the musical director of the band. He's a professional musician. He's been playing for a long time. Um, he's like one of my musical heroes. I got to be on stage with him for a couple songs. Very cool. It's very fun. And these are songs that I picked, right? So I picked these songs. I picked the keys. I go up and I'm playing them and I'm singing them fine. You know, I'm singing all right. And then I get the nod from him. Hey, solo, you know? Everyone knows that nod, right? Every musician knows the, the nod. Like, take it. And as a musician, you want the nod. Yeah, give me the ball, coach. Like, put me in. I'm ready. And I choked. Oh, did I choke. Oh, man. Really bad solo. And it's not just in my head. Because I got notes. <laughs> so I come off stage. And I get this look. <laughs> and I knew it. Oh, and thinking about it now, it still is embarrassing. And one note I got from a family member was, your singing sounded really good. The guitar, was that, was everything okay with the guitar? <laughs> now, I will say this. It wasn't my guitar. It wasn't my amp. It was a, the air clapped and strat, and I didn't know how to turn off the, like, mid-boost thing. So I had no idea, like, the tones I was getting. And I was going straight into a Silverface um, deluxe reverb. You know, it was hard for me to find my tone. A poor craftsman blames his tools. And I am a poor craftsman because I'm blaming my tools. It reminds me, I used to be in this band called Treaty of Pairs. And we would, you know, tour. It was like a pop rock band, right? Pop punk, pop rock. And we would always notice when someone was tour tight, right? That was our time. Oh, man, they're tour tight. And that just comes with repetition, being on stage. And that's what I don't have right now. There's no replacement for playing on stage regularly, finding your rhythm, finding your groove, being confident in what you're going to play for the song, right? The other musical memory it brought up was that I used to be a trumpet player in a jazz band in like middle school and high school. We played like botanical gardens and I took a terrible solo on trumpet. And I got a note when I got off stage, like you gotta take a deep breath before you solo. You're trying to play every note in the scale, right? Just like focus on a line. And so now 30 years later, I'm still learning that same lesson. Take a deep breath, ask a question, answer it, build tension, release it. Well, let's look at this logically, right? I can't play out live often enough to get tour tight, right? Like two to three nights a week. That's not in the cards right now. But what I can do is create kind of like a training regimen where I have to build solos quickly and then say something quickly and then get out. And how am I gonna do this? With that, the loop core pedal from New X. It's a stereo pedal, it's got a drum track built into it. It's like practicing to a metronome, right? And practicing to a metronome, every player will tell you, man, like you gotta get those hours in with the metronome because it builds your internal rhythm, it builds your consistency and your discipline when you're playing, especially as you're adding more complex lines. I mean, because these are the two things that are happening when you're improvising, you're soloing. As you're building complexity with your melody and your rhythm, the other part of your brain 
is trying to rein it and make sure it fits within you know, the time signature, within the bars, within the meter. So I'm building tension. What am I going to do to release it? And all that time, you're also making sure don't rush. Don't rush. It's so rare that you'll drag. It's very common that you'll rush. Now, you don't need a loop pedal to do this, right? You can record a track in your DAW. GarageBand on iPhone will do it for you. So you don't necessarily need a looping pedal. But this works for me because my goal in it is to practice along to a drum track. I don't want to get in the composing mode. I don't want to get into like, um, like on my phone, right? That's like a bad thing. You don't want to be touching the phone when you're trying to practice because all it takes is one notification and whoosh, there goes 20 minutes. I'm going to try to make myself better. I'm trying to build a little regimen and maybe you as well will be able to reduce the embarrassing musical moments in your life. To that groove right it's just like a one to a six uh, a minor six so that doesn't offer a lot of room to grow in your solo but i was happy that for a little bit i was kind of saying interesting things you know it's kind of like here's blues guy doing blues things right i want to try that phrase again and i want to see if i can play something a little bit more interesting something there. There are some fun things there. There's some fun ideas there. And I think this is what I need to do more, right? Build a phrase, solo, but don't solo for like five minutes. One minute, two minutes. And whatever that, whatever you get there, be like, oh, that was a cool thing. That was a cool thing. And hold on to it. Now, I got kind of carried away in that like, um, In my mind, I'm like, okay, like you're you're kind of like burning time to like wait for something to come to you. And that's okay. Like I shouldn't fault myself for that. Because if I'm going to do that, I have to do that in time and follow some kind of rules. And those rules, are, I was following like a call and repeat kind of thing. Let's try that one more time and try to do slow the whole time, but build it through slow. Okay, last time, I promise. <laughs>
right? Now it gives me room, I can solo more now, right? That was actually pretty fun because I built some fun things at the beginning. Like I built those kind of like chords, those longer kind of chords. It made me want to hear like a single note line afterwards. I think that's kind of interesting. I, I don't do that very much in solos. Usually only got like, you know, four bars. So it's like, do you have time to play that? But maybe you do have time. I, sometimes I give myself this false um, time limit where it's like, well, you got to say it now. But really, like, what if I only need one bar for single lines, right? Like, what if I only could do that in four? But I think I should try that. Like four bars, the first two are like chording and like interesting longer notes. And then that sets the groundwork for like what I'm trying to say with like a single notes. And then it goes back, you know, four bars in and out. Like that's, that's pretty quick. That's a soul groove. So like, I think two revolutions through that. First pass is like just like chords, right? And like building tension through chords. And then the second one is building a lead line off of those. Let's try it. <laughs> Two passes, two of chords, two of lead lines. Okay. right?
that's kind of cool. Okay, like that was that was kind of good. Like can, I, I can already feel myself calming down. Right, that like right when you and I was like time to solo. And I'm like, uh oh, now what? What do I play? It's like even playing guitar for thirty years. Like play something. But sometimes your brain goes like, ooh, this isn't. We're not ready. If you've ever had some kind of phobia, if you've ever had, had some kind of fear, only way to break through that is to gradualize desensitization to that fear, that scariness, that tension. For you younger players and you new players, like you're gonna feel it like right here. It's gonna be like a little pit, and that's like the adrenaline dumping into your system, right? And you're gonna be like, Gah! you're gonna grip the guitar way harder than you need to. You're gonna hold the pick like it's gonna be taking from you, right? All these terrible physical things are going to happen that never would normally happen. And the only way to get through that is to gradually expose yourself to that fear. You're not going to get better if you don't do it. Just like, like I mean, this is what I'm learning right now. I'm not going to get better unless I don't practice specifically with intent. Right? What was that? Like practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Now, perfect practice doesn't mean not making mistakes. Perfect practice means structuring your practice so that it gives you your intended result. Why are you practicing? What are you doing? Right? And so what I'm doing right now is like, I'm specifically focused on trying to make my solo and lead lines more articulate and more meaningful and meaningful through building tension and releasing tension, saying something uh, interesting, right? Saying something interesting that also speaks to me. Someone asked Wynton Marcellus, like, hey, like, who's more important for you, like the listener or the player? And he's like, the player. The player is the first listener. You're the one who hears it first, so you also have to enjoy it. In case you can't tell, I love music. And sometimes I wonder, like, I'll, I'll see some of these other guitar channels. Most of them are so good. Like, almost all of them are so good. But sometimes I wonder if they actually like music or, like, they like playing. Now, they don't have to be, like, Mr. Excitable Guy like me. But sometimes I'm, like, I'm very confused. I'm like, does this guy like playing guitar? Does this guy like playing piano? Because it doesn't look like they enjoy it. Like, I love music so much. And a lot of times that clouds my judgment because I love it so much that I w I'm not willing to like dive down. I'm like, okay, you suck at this, gotta get better. My point is that you're the first listener, so you have to enjoy your soloing as well. Now, the loop core is cool because that's stereo out and you can split the outs. Right now I have one out going, is just guitar and like the loops, those are going to one channel and then the drums are going to a completely separate channel. So if you have this pedal and you got a mixer, you gotta throw a little room and compression on the drums and it makes it kind of feel more like a real drum set, sound like a real drum set. Now, if you don't have a DAW, it's still fine. You can still do, do that through your um, amp. But if you have two amps, you could have drums coming out of one amp and then your guitar and your loops coming out of the other amp, right? So like that's a cool thing to do because sometimes you want to separate that. This has a whole bunch of different styles. So it's got metal and pop and punk and stuff like that. But this this rock one is the one I like. It's just like a nice straightforward beat. It's a beat that I would want when I was when I would be playing. Okay, let's try one more a little bit faster, right? So this is a lot faster, which means I need to pay more attention, which means I need to figure out what I'm gonna do. Let's try that same thing, try some chording, and then lead into some solo.
I got carried away, missed some notes, and then I was just kind of like aimlessly playing. It's harder when it's fast, right? Um, especially in like that kind of groove. I mean, that's like that's not a groove that I'm normally used to playing. So that's like a minor third with a, a six and a nine, right? And then with a with a four over two. So what would I do there? So I could do like a... Okay, let's try something like that. See, that's where I really need to practice a medium to fast tempo that has some cording that, that has like kind of interesting turnarounds. I'm, I'm gonna start adding this to my practice routine. Maybe not every day, but like certainly at least like once a week, I think it'd be important to do something like this, right? Build something small, critique myself, you know, critique myself pretty hard and have pretty narrow parameters. Like just play for one minute, make it interesting. You got four bars and then like change up the tempo, change up the chords, especially chords that I'm not comfortable with. Thanks again, NewX, for sending this loop core. I think it's gonna make me a lot better. And I hope this video is gonna make you a lot better. But not just here, but here. And here, where it counts. Thanks. Thanks.